from Kruma Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Chimera Report. The Ilanga Cup is Southern Africa's first closed track endurance circuit event, which is focused on promoting innovations in renewable and alternative energy. Darren Parker attended the Ilanga Cup, where he saw teams go head-to-head -head in an endurance challenge. The Ilanga Cup, which commemorated its first event at Red Star Raceway in Delmas last month, serves as a platform for solo car teams, professionals and amateurs alike to not only test the viability of their solar-powered car designs, but also to learn and improve both team and vehicle dynamics. The goal of the Ilunga Cup is uh, to give South African solo car teams an annual event where they can come and test their projects out, um, but also to make solo car competition or events more accessible to South African teams. Um, most of the events are open road events and those tend to be quite costly and difficult to get into. They're by design, they're designed to be hard, uh, but, a, but a closed circuit racetrack event such as the Ilunga Cup is a lot more accessible. So the ultimate goal is to increase the number of universities and high schools participating in solar car events uh, in Southern Africa. We have three cars that made it through our scrutineering process. Um, the first car is from the Tswane University of Technology, um, the second car is from the Northwest University and then the third one is from the uh, high school team from John Foster High School. Um, those are the three that made it through scrutineering which is basically a process where we check that the cars are compliant with our regulations and that they, they most importantly are, are safe to compete here the, this morning. Uh, so they are the three cars that you see out on track uh, busy competing at the moment. The event was sponsored by tyre manufacturer Bridgestone. The Ilanga Cup really is a, a, a stepping stone to the global stages where Bridgestone is already a part of. So um, from a brand perspective, Bridgestone is very much focused on sustainability. And one of our missions is really how do we how do we drive excitement and passion through showcasing sustainable innovation and community upliftment? And this is really what we're seeing here today. All the teams are university students that are coming together to build and pioneer these incredible technologies that we're seeing that drive these, uh, these cars here today. And uh, it just makes sense for us from a brand perspective to align ourselves with this because this is what we're doing on a global stage as well. Um, this is really a stepping stone to, to the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. The Twane University of Technology solar team were declared the winners at the end of the day. The team's Sun Chaser 4 managed to travel 390 kilometers during the eight hour long endurance challenge, which comprised 93 laps at an average speed of 48 kilometers per hour, with a top speed of 101 kilometers per hour. We stay away from a monetary prize. Um, the reason being is because the universities mainly are competing, um, monetary prizes aren't, aren't really what they're looking for. The prize more is the experience and the, the practical knowledge that the students who participate in building these cars achieve from being here. Uh, but it's also to prepare these teams for, for bigger events uh, and international events. So the teams, uh, the team coming first will have a lovely trophy, uh, courtesy of our sponsor Bridgestone South Africa. Uh, but the teams don't compete for money, they more compete for the pride and the the prestige of, of, of winning an event like this, um, but also for having the opportunity to test their, their, uh, their projects out, I suppose is the word. From a brand perspective, you know, where we see this going is the teams really compete for that, that global ticket to get onto the, the Bridgestone World Solar Challenge. So from a, from a prize perspective, I think that's really what it's more, it's more about that. You know, it's not really so much about uh, the money and cash prizes or anything like that. It's more about did all of our efforts pay off in the end? and I think that's what, that's what matters the most for them. The Ilunga Cup saw the three teams go head-to-head -head in an endurance challenge where their self-designed, unique solar-powered vehicles competed to raise awareness and promote the viability of the technology used in the vehicles. On this racetrack, they, um, we, the, the cars will get up to maximum speed of about 80 kilometers an hour. Um, obviously, this, this event is an endurance event, so it's not necessarily all about speed. It's about how many kilometers they can get within the specific time frame. Um, so the event is designed to be endurance based. So that means what they're looking for is the best possible speed to drive where they can get the most number of laps in and also balance that against the energy that they need um, to do that. So the energy versus what they get from their solar array uh, versus what the battery Needs. So this event is not necessarily about speed, it's more about maintaining that uh, the endurance that they can get. Um, on the open road, um, we've driven behind some of these cars uh, on a high speed test track that they've gone up to about 130 kilometers an hour. Um, so if they have a long straight, they can, they can really get going if they need to. 
um, incredibly stable and incredibly aerodynamic. So once they get up to those speeds, they can maintain those speeds for a very long time. What we've seen with the endurance aspect is the teams here have all expressed that this is very different to, to driving on the open road. Uh, with the constant braking and the acceleration and deceleration, uh, we've seen one, or two, one team already uh, go through their, their motor controller um, just with the constant acceleration and deceleration. Um, so they've had to replace the controller as well as the, the motors themselves um, you know, because they, they're designed for gradual acceleration, not braking and acceleration around a racetrack. So I think a lot of the teams have experienced um, they've a learning curve when it comes to being on a, on a racetrack versus being on the open road. Um, other than that, the, the cars are designed to be pretty bulletproof, if, if I'm honest. Uh, most of the teams here are looking to compete in events later on in the year where they'll cover a couple of thousand kilometers on the open road. So the cars are, are designed to be stable um, and reliable vehicles that, that can do that kind of kilometers. Um, obviously the weather didn't really play its part today, so they're not collecting as much energy as they would normally do uh, through their solar arrays. Uh, so now what's, what's next will be the strategy that the teams employ and how that strategy evolves over the next couple of hours as they head towards four o'clock. And I suppose the, the, the weakest component really of, of, the, of the vehicle and the team is the driver themselves. Um, I think the drivers doing two hour stints come three, four o'clock this afternoon, the drivers will be quite worn out of going around the track in two hour stints. So that's where the teams will be managing the fatigue of, of, the, of the, the human element, dare I say. On the day of the event, overcast weather presented an unforeseen challenge for the competitors. Overcast weather, what it really does is it means that the teams have to maybe dial back the speeds that they would be driving at. Um, the solar arrays on these cars are highly efficient, so they would still be collecting radiation, uh, potentially not at the same uh, high percentage that they would be. Um, on a clear sunny day, most of these cars are at a good speed. They'll be driving what they call neutral, so that means the energy um, collected through the solar array would be equal to the energy that they're using to drive, and the battery would actually be, be not used. Um, on a day like today, they, will, they won't be driving neutral at all. Uh, they'll probably be getting half the energy from the array um, and the other half would be slowly wearing down the battery. What we expect to see come one, two o'clock is the teams that have managed their battery life will start to go faster and faster. Um, because when they cross the finish line at four o'clock, they don't want to cross the finish line with a battery at, at 70, 80%. They would like, they want to cross at 10%, meaning they've driven the maximum amount of kilometers. So as the day wears on and, and when the sun pokes its head out, um, the team strategists will constantly be evolving and communicating with the drivers in terms of what speeds they should be driving uh, to match the, the energy that they're collecting versus the energy that they're using. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a delicate ballet that they, they, will, they will play between the sun and, and, the, and the driver and the, and the energy required to, to drive. Uh, we're fortunate that there is no wind, so they're luckily not having to compete against that. Um, but yeah, the, the cars still collect very huge amounts of energy from their solar arrays. These are highly efficient arrays that they're putting on. The Alanga Cup will take place yearly from now on. But what does the future hold for the event? This year is just really just the start of uh, a, a possible future future partnership uh, going ahead. Um, we are not naming right sponsors, we are more on the technical side of things. We're technical partners or official tyre partners to the programme. Um, some, of, some of the teams are actually even running uh, Bridgestone tyres Bridgestone as, as it is. Next year we hope to bring a specialised solar, solar car tyre for these teams so that we see them running on all bridges on tires. But for this year, we, we wanted to get a feel for how the event is going to run and really how we can, uh, how we can partner from a brand perspective uh, with the Alanda Cup. Looking at solar energy in itself, uh, we're finding more and more popular every day. But um, if we look at motorsport specifically as an environment that pioneers technologies that find its way into, into everyday cars, if you look at the likes of Formula One and hybrid turbos and things like that, that find its way into vehicles, I have no doubt that we'll see uh, solar energy finding its way into vehicles of the future. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.